you now, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jivan. Uh, and uh, good evening um, and uh, or good day, wherever you guys are logging in from. Uh, in the era of digital conferences, we don't know where people are logging in and what time zones you guys are in. But uh, thank you for, uh, you know, being here with us. And uh, uh, it's my honor to, uh, you know, run a you know short panel discussion with some of the Star Wars. Uh, and then Jivan, thank you for that introduction. I think uh, each one of uh, the guys here in the team, not including me, uh, deserve to be uh, you know in, on, on that uh, introduction but uh, without further ado let, let me just quickly um, you know kind of uh, go through a little bit more introduction to the the, the panels uh, panelists that we have for us um, we have Subramaniam Ayer Subu as uh, we love to call him he is the senior vice president and head of customer experience for DBS Bank but Subu I, th I think uh, you have a plethora of experience you also come from uh, um, telecom and you know all of that so i think you will uh, it would be lovely to get some of your perspectives around uh, you know overall how things have uh, you know um, moved over the years and uh, for for the listeners uh, subu is also a, a, a cricket fanatic if i may use that word right uh, 2020 um, corporate uh, player so uh, great to uh, have you back and i think this is the third time we are interacting so good to have you here thank you thank you shikant right um, we have also um, KB Deepu. Uh, Deepu is the president and head of operations uh, for communities and uh, uh, customer service for Bajaj Alliance. Uh, hardcore into, uh, I think, insurance, uh, Deepu, if I may say so. Uh, Last uh, five years, uh, before that, 20 years in financial services. Absolutely. So, so banking, financial, uh, Starboard. Um, he's also, by the way, um, he, he teaches in institutes. He also, and I, I follow his LinkedIn posts. Um, he also is a trip advisor, uh, number one reviewer with uh, millions of uh, posts and followers, right? Uh, so, so, so thank you for joining thank us you. today. Right. Um, I also have uh, the honor of introducing you uh, to Ravish uh, Bhatnakar. He's the SVP and head of uh, digital banking for Indusind Bank. Uh, I think uh, before that, uh, Ravish, you've been with uh, McKinsey and some of the consulting uh, experiences. I'm hoping that you will bring that uh, to us uh, today. Um, Ravish is also an avid trekker, and I think uh, you and I we kind of share that passion. I am a I'm a biker and a trekker, so we kind of <laughs> will have some stories to uh, share as we go along. Uh, thank you for joining in. Sure, thank you. Right. Thank Sanjay, you. thank you for uh, joining in from across the creek. Uh, Sanjay is the senior vice president for uh, NDB, National Development Bank. Um, and I'm very glad to have you uh, with us on the panel. Thank you. Right. Uh, let's get straight into the, uh, the the topic that we were wanting to talk about today. Um, I, oh, by the way, I'll just introduce myself for those of you who don't know. Um, I, I'm the director of uh, Asian operations for COPC, been in the um, customer experience field for almost about 20, 23 years now. Uh, COPC is a consulting firm and we consult several industries, including BFSI, uh, across uh, the region. And uh, my focus has been in Asia, but you also been, you know, working with uh, Middle East and, uh, you know, uh, Europe and um, uh, some parts of US. Um, we'll try to hopefully bring in some of that experience as we uh, go into the panel. Um, the topic for today, for uh, for us uh, and, and all of us kind of know, the, the overall theme for the conference is the key drivers of digital transformation. And the topic that we have for today is to talk about transactional, moving from transactional customer experience to relational customer experience, right? And gaining new customers, keeping them for life. Um, at COPC, we talk about what we call service journey. Some of you probably already have heard this term, right? I mean, we, we call it customer journey, but customer journey also includes um, the marketing and the branding part. Service journey is generally uh, what we would normally call as the path that a customer takes across multiple channels to get something done, right? So, for example, if they want to get a loan, for example, or they, they want to they want to become a new customer, for example, then you know, generally we find that it is not one transaction, but it ha typically happens across multiple transactions. So that, as an understanding, seems to be increasing in the industry. And I wanted to start with that as a, as a pivot and uh, maybe ask uh, Subhu, you've been in this now industry and across actually multiple industries. How do you see 
uh, this happening across the industry. Do you see year on year? And I'm not only talking about the pandemic. Of course, pandemic has given a completely different perspective to almost all of us. All of us have, you know, redefined the way we work. But even before that, do you see that people have started to become more holistic? Um, do you see that they are looking at across transactions or uh, and 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 overall, you know, uh, customers' um, journey or life cycle? If I may put it that way. Sure. Thank you, Srikant. Uh, good evening, everyone, uh, uh, to all the fellow panelists and as well as the audience. Uh, uh, thanks, Srikant, for that question. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the simple answer to your question is uh, an absolute yes. Uh, over a period of time, as uh, you know, consumers, uh, the consumer behavior has evolved over a period of time. If we, if we take our own examples, right? I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm just taking banking as an example. Uh, say, for example, uh, weekends or Saturdays used to be a, a clear chore in our uh, you know list of activities yeah, to go yeah. along with our dad to finish a banking transaction. Got and it. it it used to be a it it used to be a um, a big one one and a half two hour kind of a kind of an experience right so from there to now wherein you know uh, over a period of time the customer has evolved customer has you know um, the customer preferences have changed uh, what does the customer ultimately want is um, security uh, dependability or reliability and it's an ease of operation. Ease of use, right? I would say. That. Ease of yeah. use, correct. So, so once you provide all of this, and on a consistent basis, you continue to get into that um, being trustworthy as a as a partner. So once you're able to deliver all of this to a customer, your interaction with the customer continues to increase. Continues to uh, customer continues to depend upon you for taking care of you know their jobs to be done and so on. And that actually provides us an opportunity, great opportunity to go back and make it all the more easier, uh, all the more um, contextual from the customer perspective. So, yes. So from the from, you know, your question standpoint, the customer preferences, what does the customer want? Have things changed? The answer is yes. You have multiple, you know, modes of providing service at this point in time, from a physical to a completely a digital, uh, and all the organizations because of the digital drive, you have enough and more data at your disposal, Correct. and you can actually go back and you know kind of provide that kind of a service, a customized service. Easier said than done, but customized service to each and every individual or each and every segment of customer. Right, great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, and that, that's uh, that's a great starting point. And by the way, uh, for the listeners, for people who are joining in, in case you have any questions for our uh, you know panelists to Subu or to um, any of us, please feel free to keep on writing them in the chat window. Um, at the end of the session, we will have about ten minutes to have a Q and A, so we will pick them up. But feel free to type them in, and as the you know session progresses, I will try to pick them up and ask to the to the panelists, right? So thank you, uh, Subhu, for that one. Um, I'll take that uh, thread a little forward and uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, ask uh, Deepu. Um, moving a little bit uh, away from the banking as such, but, you know, re related uh, field in, uh, in any BFSI, um, there is a plethora of technology that we see nowadays, right? And uh, we cannot have a conference. I mean, right now we are having a conference through technology. So of course we, we know that, but you have all these, you know, uh, visual UIs, you have, uh, you know, ML, you have AI, all sorts of technologies coming in. What, what has been your experience in Bajaj Alliance or even earlier, where you find that, you know, has the has some of the new tech actually been able to drive a better uh, seamless, you know, um, customer experience across channels. Yeah. So, uh, Shrikant, uh, the answer is, you know, resounding yes, uh, especially because COVID-19, you know, as one of my friends put it colorfully, was a global unplanned UAT. And, you know, I guess, uh, you know, all our digital assets, you know, really came to the fore when contact centers had to be shut down or when they had to work with, you know, highly reduced capacity. Correct. All these digital assets came to the fore, WhatsApp, our AI-driven bot, uh, mobile app, customer portal. Yeah. So what's so frequent that uh, even today, even the contact centers are back in action, our digital servicing still continues to be high. 
so which obviously means that uh, you know people did not use them because of, of a lack of choice but they actually use them because they find the journey is you know frictionless and seamless and the other number which i like to share which even came as a pleasant surprise to us is during covid 19 when we had to switch to these uh, digital channels our customer grievance ratio fell by 90% 90 wow so that just shows you know how uh, you know uh, seamless this journey has been having said that shrikant now uh, you know all the year into covid 19 because around the same time this year is when the entire you know lockdown phase happened, started right. right yeah around march last year about 11 yeah, months into year it. into it yeah yeah what we are seeing now is while the accent earlier has been on uh, digitizing the physical now customers are coming back and saying that uh, it's good you know bots are clinical and consistent but we also need a healing touch so we need care and empathy so now the accent has shifted to humanizing the digital how do you ensure that you know bots mimic uh, human beings how do you bring in care and empathy even as you ramp up digital services so that's the spectrum of you know what we have seen in the last uh, you know one year i think and i completely agree with you on this one especially when you are putting a new tech right and i keep telling a lot of my clients this is my favorite line you want a cutting edge technology you don't want bleeding edge technology right i mean <laughs> you put in something right and the customers don't get, uh, and and this is one of the biggest problem and you 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 put up a chatbot the chatbot doesn't work right and and we did a recent research in it's a copc about 45% of the people that we uh, researched they said that the chatbots are not uh they are they are robotic they are not helpful so i would rather speak with an agent now that completely takes that equation out because you were trying to put in something right to move people right to something which is more helpful for them they can do it themselves it's self service and here people are going back to traditional channels right so right. not only does it add cost but it just completely moves your business model right to Absolutely. the reality. Right. Absolutely. Any specific examples of you know uh, some of the techs that you have uh, you know implemented that has worked um, in the recent year? Yeah. So I'll uh, share two three examples, uh, Shrikant. One is if you look at a bot to the point that you made. See, bots can only uh, operate from what you teach them, right? From the past. Correct. What Correct. we did was just in case you know there's an exceptional query which the customer cannot handle, it's hmm. immediately transferred in a seamless manner to a human being who takes it through. Like and a blended show, yeah. That that if you are able to service the customer in one click, okay. NPS can be as high as ninety five, hmm. but if you or ninety six, but if you break it into just two journeys, you tell him that yeah. you know terminal chat go and call the call center, yeah. it can fall to sixty five. The other is in health insurance where our customers go in for hospitalization, they typically have two worries. One is how do I move from illness to wellness. and the other is you know navigating this complex administrative machinery in hospitals right so we deployed a virtual relationship manager he calls up these customers and he offers them care and empathy he tells them you just focus on recovery i'll take care of the administrative processing and he does it digitally and when we got an nps done on this we scored a score score of 80 90 without hmm. a single detractor ah uh, uh. Wonderful, awesome, great! Is that the one that keeps going on in LinkedIn about talking about the uh, the, the new bot that you have put in there? <laughs> I know it's one of the it's one of the one use of the, cases. Uh, you know, there right. are various other use cases for the bot, but I just picked up okay. these two examples. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Adipu. Um, yeah, maybe uh, you know, coming back to banking, uh, maybe I would uh, you know put that uh, question to let's say Ravish. Um, do you see? I mean, you you've been in consulting, you've seen you know things across industries. Do you see parallels? do you, uh, with, with the banking as an industry we have lots of uh, bankers logged in today for this conference do um, you see parallels do you see differences um and uh, in general what is your take on uh, so, this industry yeah by the way good evening everyone uh, i think from india at least i am not sure where all as she can say <laughs> people have logged in uh, you know i think i when i look at uh, you know the specific parallels and i at least see uh when it comes about when we talk about digital transformation at least and from my earlier experience uh, given that i used to do this uh, for a lot of other industries besides okay. banking as well mm. uh there are there are five core areas right uh, one is let you know and and those are pretty much similar uh, at least at a broad level uh, you know for each for major industries at least the customer facing industries okay uh, and uh, i'll just maybe talk about that Uh, the first one and probably the most important one and very relevant to the current topic that we are discussing right we are, we are talking about how do you move from transactional to relational Correct. and uh, and that's all about the customer right so Correct. design a uh, customer journey design uh, you know the, the the core product so the design uh, is is one of the most important things because that's what makes 
uh, a custom experience uh, you know, from an, from a good to great right that's what right. you right. would want to want to achieve right so design at least i think uh, is something that is i'm seeing is emerging as a parallel across these cu uh, customer facing industries and it's uh, slowly becoming uh, if not the md level agenda but at least the c suite agenda right so uh, i think that's an important topic uh, and uh, you know one of the first things for example what when i did right when i joined uh, this current role right uh, we didn't have an in house uh, design sort of a team right so we uh, we picked out somebody who was actually interested in design and we we groomed him on on tools etc and then in parallel to you know to work more on the design aspect we actually got a additional agency as well involved right so now we have a proper three to four member team by the way a small team but but still working on customer journeys design and and trying to you know bring out the excellence in them right mm -hmm. so what design delivers is uh, at three levels right it delivers a uh, greater customer loyalty so i i can give you a lot of examples uh, and uh, you know through engagement right and and i think wallets uh, and specifically uh, you know wallets like uh, you know gk gpay paytm mm -hmm. who actually have evolved uh, right and they started with simple things like scratch card right Right. Obviously, you don't get a lot of uh, rupees off, but earlier you were getting a lot of rupees off when you used to scratch, right? Yeah. So you you started making it engage engaging with the customer, right? Similarly, there's a there's a very cool example uh, back in China which has completely revolutionized uh, you know uh, loyalty to the next level, right? So there's something called Ant Forest. I don't know a lot of people might have uh, in Southeast Asia heard about it, but but due to Ant Forest, roughly around uh, you know. 200 million plus trees were planted uh, you know north west of beijing so that the the pollute and and this happened on the back of customers who were actually so now if you are paying a bill you were getting points you were walking you were getting points mm -hmm. you doing anything in the banking ecosystem plus also your health ecosystem they said ki you know cl climate change is a big problem so mm -hmm. you got to work towards it mm -hmm. and uh, for everything you got points and customers got points and then they could plant trees so what they did was For each of the trees that they planted, northwest of Beijing, there is a wall that is getting created, which stops uh, the the sand, the sandstorms, right, mm -hmm. from the Gobi Desert to come into Beijing, which mm -hmm. actually pollutes a lot of things. So it's just completely there are there are things that uh, you know people have done from a customer loyalty perspective, which is design, which is completely changed yeah. the world, right? And similarly, uh, yeah. People feel that they are part of a larger community. They feel that they are contributing, right? So it uh, adds to the brand. It adds to the loyalty to yeah. the brand, right? That's great, great yeah. example. Yeah, right. yeah. And okay. and two other smaller things which I'll just talk about are because I think customer loyalty is a topic. So I wanted to emphasize on that is sure. whether design for generating more business has been, uh, you know, and so while the customer loyalty is foremost important, but uh, mm -hmm. you can design for generating greater, uh, you know, business as well. Mm -hmm. um, so cross sell retention during the customer journey at the right points you can do so many things which a lot of technology which is available right now right, right. and similarly design for performance uh, because at the end of the day if your uh, digital assets are not performing then the design uh, you know the you know everything yeah. falters yeah it so means design to be is a core thing right. yeah correct correct it means to be useful it needs to be easy to use right those are the two main right if you if you really look at it if if the if any technology that you are putting in if it is not doing that then we are going to have a bit of a problem right so thanks ramesh for those uh, contributions on on that one that's an excellent uh, thought around it sanjay uh, if i can come to you and um, you know i i, I mean all of us um are trying in different ways and uh, means and we have different ecosystems so i just wanted to hear from you what is your experience been right uh, in, in in sri lanka especially or even otherwise if you are uh, looking at other countries uh, what has been your experience in terms of some of the new tech some of uh, some of it looking at across the customers journey uh, is there anything that you would like to share yeah i think uh, sri lanka uh, is uh, going into uh, digitalization uh, in a big way now uh, if you look at uh, almost all the banks the buzzword was digitalization and they kept on investing a lot uh, but uh, pre covid the acceptance of uh, customers to do transaction digitally especially the financial transaction which they are very concerned about the security uh, was not that encouraging Uh, but uh, uh, for our bank, uh, the digitalized uh, transactions done through digital channels was around 60% pre-COVID. Uh, 
Okay. However, uh, I think uh, COVID, well, I, I don't think we should even uh, think of uh, getting back to, into COVID. Yeah. Uh, but that was a blessing in disguise because yeah. uh, people were forced to uh, use alternate channels other yeah. than uh, meeting, uh, meeting uh, staff physically. So they went into digital uh, digital uh, channels, and uh, now we see uh, we because we were also agile uh, to change immediately even during the lockdown period. I think we had about three weeks of lockdown in Sri Lanka. Uh, with that, we were very agile to change whatever the uh, channels that we have and make it more customer friendly. And uh, today we are at about 85% of our transactions are through digital, uh, digital channels. Mm -hmm. We have 113 branches uh, that is also needed. One must not uh, think that you don't need physical branches. Yeah. Uh, of course, in Indian standards, 113 branches is nothing, but Sri Lanka is a very one state branch. <laughs> so kind of <laughs> Yes, so 130 branches is a big investment. Uh, we are the fourth largest listed bank in Sri Lanka. But uh, we feel that investing in channels, uh, digital channels, and uh, giving them the opportunity yeah. is more lucrative than going into brick and mortar. So okay. uh, we are investing in digital channels. And also, as Sri Lanka, uh, through Central Bank of Sri Lanka, they have gone into cashless uh, initiatives. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, all this time it was uh, credit and debit which was more maybe the upper middle class who were using it mm -hmm. the merchants were more the uh, malls and uh, the department stores mm -hmm. but now we have introduced the qr uh, Naka qr mm -hmm. which all banks are involved and now even the uh, king coconut seller is mm -hmm. having a qr the flower uh, uh, vendor is having a qr so yeah. and the discount is very very low it's minimal 0.5 percent yeah. And uh, that will definitely give a lot of uh, digital uh, Drive. Uh, usage from yeah. both customers and merchants. Yeah, yeah, I received a very similar one in India. So thank you, uh, Sanjay, for sharing that. And glad to see that you know, we, you know, the, the countries around uh, you know the um, uh, you know this this particular region in in the world kind of going hand in hand and uh, trying to yeah. work things together that it's a very interesting point but that brings me back to uh subu now that you have for the what, last five six months you had this unique situation where you have uh you know you have uh, there is a merger between dps and uh let's be with us bank so on one side like you were you know we were discussing backstage that you have a fully digital model and then you have a traditional hundred year old uh you know a completely uh, physical model how do we uh, look at customer experience across these two is there a is there a, a way by which you are able to uh, uh, integrate it are you uh, how do you see some uh, some challenges and is there any uh, uh, you know anything that you would like to talk about which is a, you know from a broader perspective right even uh, to what sanjay just mentioned right you need to have a physical presence and at the same time you also need to be digitally present so any key takeaways that you have got you know uh, based on based on that experience yeah, yeah absolutely shikant um, and and this also you know, kind of goes back and corroborates with the with the topic that we have with regards to you know from transactional to yeah, a relationship sure. led uh, it is it is in fact a huge you know kind of a learning curve for us as well right i mean if you see you know both the organizations uh, dbs bank and uh, lakshmi vilas bank Mm. Both on you know kind of different ends of the spectrum. Mm. One is you know completely digital or or predominantly digital in nature. I mean, for example, the bot and everything that we spoke about. Right. Out of out of hundred odd uh, transactions, about um, 76, 77 percent of all our interactions get done through the bot. Right, 76, 77 percent is is pretty high, and and as uh, Deepu and Ravish also mentioned, mm. we continue to make the bot you know kind of intelligent. We continue to the bot continues to learn, right, yeah. and, and to bring in that empathy and so on and so forth. Uh, so so while you know that is that continues to happen. Second thing that has happened because of COVID is the entire digital drive you know across the board across industries i mean it is it has got uh, super accelerated right at least all the organizations have at least uh, you know kind of um, taken their digital 
revolution at least by about you know three years uh, it, it is an advanced about at least by three years right like the, that is actually given a technology right? officer award for 2020 would yeah, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> right so while you are able to build all of this here on the other end of the spectrum is uh, a bank which is absolutely traditional in nature Mm. It also goes back, you know, to to which part of the country you are from, and you know what do people prefer. It goes back to customers' preferences and stuff. Okay. And and these are the set of customers who have you know kind of banked with you for three generations together, which okay. means three okay. generations is at least a 35, 40 odd year together, right? I mean, right. grandfather, father, son, and and it continues. Yeah. So how do you blend both of it together? It is, it is that is where it is extremely important to understand what does the customer want. Super, and, super. and when we are talking about customer journey, when we are talking about service journey and everything, uh, continue to go back and hear, listen to customers. What do they, what do they say? Right. I mean, there are there are quite a few stated uh, voice of customer that comes in through your typical requests, complaints, yeah. and so on yeah. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. In the digital frame, there are unstated, you know, customer voice that comes in, cues that comes in, which you know each and everybody of us has to pick it up. Right. There is right. abundance of data that we have. Absolutely. Why did the customer fall in a particular journey or drop off? All oh. what I meant by fall is hmm. why did the customer drop, drop off in a particular yeah. journey? Yeah. Yeah. Am I communicating right? Is my technology right? What should I do? So that is where your research and insights goes back. You speak to the customer, try and understand, sir, kya hua? what happened? Why? You know, what was the experience like? You bring that back, work with the technology team, work with the product teams yeah. and continue to build upon your uh, uh, journey. That actually then leads to uh, aligning to what does the customer want. So provide all of these in a platter. Let yeah, the customer yeah. pick and choose, you know, during the day, for example, I may want to you know, kind of walk into a branch, have a cup of coffee and have a conversation with my, with my relationship manager. Yeah. I need to do a transaction at say 930 in the night. My, obviously my branch is not there. I have the power of uh, digital, right? So, so provide all of these for the customer. Let the customer pick up as to, you know, what do they want, Correct. but provide, you know, consistent, unique experience for the customer. That is going to be the game changer. Right, right, right. Great. Thank you, uh, Subhu. Um, Nico, I mean, just to coming back to, I think you also mentioned to a certain extent having customized. Do you see that this is different for different profiles of your customers? And do you see that as the things move and, you know, now we have like millennials, we have Gen X, Gen Z. Right? So do people, do you find that different people have different adaptability and, and you know, I mean, maybe the answer is yes, but the point is that how do we kind of build that as part of our overall customer management uh, approach? Well, uh, Shrikant, the, uh, the answer is yes and no. And I'll clarify why I'm saying yes and no. One is uh, why I'm saying uh, no is because, uh, you know, we've seen that uh, always, you know, a one size fits all strategy, you know, doesn't really yield results because sure. you have customers who need a choice, right? Whether it is about the channel that which they use to contact you. That's why we know we have uh, contact centers and email yeah. and WhatsApp yeah. and portals because everybody is comfortable with a different channel. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, different customers, depending on the geography, depending on demo demographics, they have, you know, you know, varying needs. So clearly, you know, there is a, there is, you know, a need for, uh, you know, demarcated segmented servicing. I mean, that is a no brainer. Absolutely. Right. Now the other angle, what we saw, especially when, uh, you know, COVID-19, uh, you know, came in, see, Mm. While we all discuss COVID-19 to death, and I don't want to go into something which is the deja vu topic, mm. but what we need to understand is that there has been no universally binding phenomenon like this. Mm. This was a situation which was truly universal, right? Earlier, you might have had some, you know, bird flu or swine flu or something which was restricted. It was local. And it's been universal, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there are two things here, right? Human behavior changes. One, it's universal. And the other is the duration of the, uh, you know, of the impact, the impulse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's obviously been long lasting. Yeah. So what we saw during this period is that everybody became comfortable, you know, with uh, digital channels, right? And there were two, three factors, you know, which aided there. Yeah. One is, you know, that people started to you know, trust it much more. You know, we saw mm -hmm. that, you know, levels of trust at corner because everybody, I think, you know, focused on uh, cybersecurity. See, one thing which we have to understand, it's not as if, you know, in the last one year, because of mm -hmm. uh, everybody working digitally, Suddenly, mm -hmm. you're seeing a spurt in, uh, you know, incidents. You've mm -hmm. seen that, right? Correct. I mean, it still continued with the more or less the same average, right? So Absolutely. Great point. Yeah. 
the other is uh, if you look at uh, you know what was the point that i made earlier about humanizing the digital today firms are realizing that ai is a science but customer centricity is, is centricity is an art so mm. how do you blend science with art to ensure that the ai that you do is human centric right how do you ensure that you go reach out to people so for right. example you take voice right voice yeah. makes it that much more human right I, i'm speaking to you know the founders of alexa once and they said that alexa receives quite a few marriage proposals mm. right? no. whatever it is worth the person was it's a machine but you know they're feeling comfortable enough you know to express themselves in a human manner <laughs> so i think the fact that you know we have moved towards human centric ai and also it was human you know the phenomenon was universal you know, yeah. i think as meant you know that it's been a segment agnostic mm. at the same time you know segmented servicing is a never ending topic you know and is you know still wonderful wonderful thank you thank you deepak for that contribution uh, ravish a uh, question to you on that one so maybe there is is there a one like a take away that we would talk about based on this one that we talked about and uh, you talked about looking outside looking at customer and having that design uh, made in such a way right uh, any experiences that you have let's say in i don't know uh, industry bank from your earlier examples also where people have really been able to do that right where they have been able to put the design to work right and maybe in indian context if we can get or you know um, that that might uh, you know for our listeners that might uh, become more um, uh, resonate better um, anything that you have on that yeah so so very interesting so i i wouldn't uh, name the client but this was uh, back in the days of mckinsey so we had to under we were actually designing uh, a entire ecosystem for uh, basically loans for that particular company and they mm-hmm. this particular company basically had very high uh, amount of commercial uh, vehicle loans right and obviously uh, and and in this particular area specifically uh, people either you know people who are owning uh, one truck or even a fleet of trucks right mm-hmm. so over there uh, we wanted to understand uh, the the customer better right so i think one of the best things that happened and we call it uh, it is in the in the consulting uh, in the mckinsey environment at least we call it uh, so setting up a design uh, setting up a design pop up studio right design so pop up studio do? okay yeah design pop up studio right so what we did was we actually where do you where do you want to get the maximum number of truckers right uh, hmm. i think if i ask the answer i will get the answer from all of you hmm. right uh, but would you take, take a guess uh, where will you get the maximum number of truckers uh, if you want to interview them yeah dhaba right uh you know uh, dhabas oh, are one place where they come in to relax right they had a toiling journey before that and they want to relax so once they have had their lunch or their tea or whatever we actually then conducted interviews uh, and we recorded them and we actually asked them about the journey their their okay. entire pain points right what are the specific pain points and then we led them into obviously understanding ki okay financially if i have to you know discuss certain products and stuff and in their local language uh, they actually then describe the entire thing right. when we actually presented the output to the to the you know the the founders of the of the company uh, they were and it's a very simple idea right it's not to to it's just that we went there and did it in the place where where you get the maximum footfall right and the number yeah. of outputs that yeah. came from by the way this is one day of activity in three different places three yeah. designers who went in yeah. obviously we it took us to design some of the you know questionnaire and the flow it took us maybe a couple of days but the output was such a fantastic output from a depth point of view Correct. and we got like some around 20 25 odd uh, truckers deep structured interviews and and the kind of understanding was unparalleled so yeah. so that's that's the uh, you know that's the uh, that's the benefit of hearing it from the horses mouth or the customers mouth and that's uh, the CBD. no substitute Yeah. do that no no i completely agree i mean we we uh, at cobc we do what we call walk through right and yeah. walk through what means that you actually behave like a customer and sometimes it's difficult to do that because we have all these biases 
right being in the business that we are in we always think that yeah you know this is this work that but you when you actually run it right and and sometimes you actually need like you mentioned right you have to get into that particular zone to be able to do that right one classic example right and all of us right all banks now have core banking all banks have digital you know um uh, you know um uh, you know uh, uh, transfers that happen but if you look at you know certain banks if you look at the way they would do so if you for example if you put uh, you know the the code right the um, um, uh, you, uh, you can immediately find which branch you know you have, and then you can send it. You can add the pay. In some cases, for some banks, you have to go through three steps to do the same uh, same activity. Now, if you just ask the question, do you have uh, you know um, a digital banking? Do you have the ability to add a new pay? The answer for both will be yes. But yeah, as a yeah, customer, yeah. right, you find that for the first one, it happens in one shot as compared to the other one, right, where it takes, let's say, three steps, right? And then you don't get this information unless you actually walk through. So thanks, Ravish, for yeah. uh, you know, bringing that concept, uh, you know, to the fore, right? I'm just going to go through, you know, around the, the group uh, one once, I mean, because we almost kind of... Uh, uh, you know, coming to the end, but um, you know, uh, if there is one thing that each one of you might want for the for for as an advice to the listeners, right, is there a one key takeaway that you would probably have? And maybe I start with uh, Sanjay. Uh, you know, in the last four or five years, based on what you have seen, is there like one key takeaway that we would like people to you know uh, think about? Yeah, I think uh, you touched upon uh, what I want to say because this digitalization is uh, 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 quite complex to a normal uh, human being. So for a non-bank especially, uh, now when we do banking, you come out with all the jargon and then we uh, expect what we know uh, that needs to be known by the customer, which is not mm -hmm. the case. So that is mm -hmm. where you, are, uh, you uh, as a consumer, you reject digital uh, channels right. so what we want to do is we need to be customer centric right. and get on to the use of the customer and develop uh, develop uh, applications where they would be comfortable in using it yeah. while uh, ensuring the security so if you sure. do that then your take up uh, from the consumers for digital channels will increase and your investment will actually get justified so I right. think that's the key that you need to uh, highlight uh, super Sanjay. I think that uh, you know that kind of resonates with what Deepu mentioned earlier. You need to humanize the technology, right? You cannot just keep on coming up with uh, you know different types of techs, right? So going back to uh, Deepu, any uh, specific maybe one one pointer that you would like people to have, and then maybe we'll take a few questions that are coming in. Yeah. So Shrikant, uh, two things. One is uh, you know it always has to start with the customer, and while it looks very simplistic, you know what I've seen typically is. If you get the foundation wrong, you know, then everything else goes wrong. Like it's like a ship with an ocean, one degree off and you reach, you know, a destination which is very different from, you know, where you originally set out to. Correct. So what I've seen is a lot of people assume that, you know, they know what the customer wants. You know, it's it's important to hear it from the customer, whether mm -hmm. it's through feedback that you get, you know, which is reactive or it is through research, you know, which is proactive. Yeah. So that's one. The second is, you know, when it comes to your internal stakeholders, don't do the heavy lift, uh, you know, heavy lifting at the end. Do it right up front. Then you figure out who are the promoters, who are the detractors, uh, handle all the objections, and then you know, it becomes very smooth. So I just mentioned these two very simple but very important basics from an implementation perspective. Great point. Thank you. Thank you, Deepu. Uh, coming back to Subhu, any particular one liner that you would like to have people to kind of think about, take away? Yeah, I think what we have been able to implement, I mean, this also goes back uh, like an example in the last about, you know, 15 to 18 months is uh, uh, integrating the voice of customer together. Mm -hmm. right? From channels, yes. you mean? From all channels. Oh, right. You may have complaints, you may have research and insights that you do, you may have the, the on the digital platform, you may have the drop-offs. Bringing everything together, you, you also go back and do the customer satisfaction surveys, transactional relationship, and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. It is it is heavy data and data with so much of rich content, which you can actually go back and you know kind of utilize. Correct. So something that that you know we realized this in about 2017 and TDS. We know that all of the all of these are there in different mm -hmm. silos. Yeah. How do we bring it together? Uh, again, not not easy to you know kind of bring everything together. Yeah. But we have been able to do that in uh, in the last year, Excellent. and now there is one single dashboard that you know. If I'm a product head, 
whatever i need to see with regards to my product i can see complete the length and breadth of you know what is happening what is the customer saying what are the top three complaints why is there is a drop off happening which yeah. kind of handset is it happening with right yeah. so yeah. that is something that you know we have been able to bring it together and uh, as deepu rightly said starts with the customer it always is about the customer keeping the customer at the center and you know building all of your journeys and so on and so forth uh, keeping the customer at, uh, at the core right super i mean it kind of fits in into some of the best practices that we've been saying and we've been talking to our clients to stop looking uh, as uh, you know vertical start looking horizontally because we continue to look at like for example we look at our branch then we look at our call center then we look at our web side then we look at our app and we say oh you know app is doing fine what's the problem right uh, call center is doing wonderful right what is the problem but the customer doesn't see us that way they look at it horizontally right they look at it across right and that becomes the challenge i think that is what you and, and just 30 seconds more uh, shrikan uh, mm. probably on on to the same point that you mentioned just now Mm. what we also have gone back and you know kind of implemented is uh, first while there used to be a business owner right we have brought in a concept of two in a box or three in a box mm. wherein there is an equal partnership from the tech side right i mean ultimately it is about the customer i, I mean un, until unless my my technology head doesn't understand what the customer wants and delivers as an organization you are failing absolutely right, right? so Thanks. so that that was really well Super, right, Ravish? Um, any uh, you know parting thoughts with the group? Yeah, I'll, I think I'll I'll just keep it very simple and echo. I think whatever the you know the part the rest of the panelists have said. Uh, for me, the mool mantra uh, is whenever in doubt, ask the customer. Whenever you want to, uh, whenever you want to, uh, you know, approve a hypothesis or reject one, ask the customer. I think for me, uh, that Great has point. been uh, you know, and that. that was always a learning thing for me and i used to use it but i think in the role that i am i think it's just uh, you know i the usage and uh, of the same has gotten magnified and it's helping right uh, whenever you want to ensure that uh, you know something the customer wants is is right and some people as you were rightly saying a lot of thing a lot of people think that they know what the customer uh, better always show them what the customer and make them hear what the customer wants right That's, those will be my parting thoughts. Super. I, I mean, so I hope that in you know, the last you know uh, half an hour that we talked about, I, we understand that right? we all want to improve customer experience, but we all also know that it's not magic. It doesn't happen just by saying that this would happen. It requires rigor. It requires discipline. It requires a way of looking at things, right? And I think looking at it from an outside-in perspective, like Ravish just mentioned, looking at it across and not just looking at individual silos, right? Like what uh, Subhu mentioned, uh, looking at it to make sure that you know having the customer at the center, right? And and as uh, as uh, Sanjay mentioned and Dipu, as you mentioned, in terms of the technology, it needs to be humanizing and not just something that we are doing to 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 reduce cost. Right, that would probably be the worst thing that we could think about, right, at this point of time. Uh, but other than that, I mean, uh, you know, if you are able to, uh, to 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 put across, I think we will we will be able to have a sustainable, uh, you know, customer experience. We will we'll be able to, uh, you know, drive better loyalty. I think that would be, you know, one of the the things that we got out of this uh, panel. So thank you everybody for your contribution. I just have one question. I will probably ask this uh, to the panelists and feel free to answer if you can. Uh, so the tools that we work with are developed. Look, right? Do do we have mechanisms to calculate the cost of broken or poor customer journey? So this is a question from Anand from uh, Techurate, and uh, do we do we do we see that happening? And that this can you know anybody can uh, pick you up, uh, pick this particular question up. Deepu, would you like to? Yeah, I I didn't hear the first part of the question, uh, Shrikant. Before customer so, journey. So, 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 is there a way by which we can calculate the cost of a broken or unsatisfactory dissatisfactory customer journey yeah it's a good question see there are two ways of measuring uh, you know customer journeys uh, one is you uh, you know do it through nps right you go and ask customers and then you know you get clear measure about you know detractors and uh, you know promoters, promoters which is a tangible way yeah the intangible way is you know when you look at your brand right because ultimately all of these data points today there are you know various methodologies by which you can measure your brand so what we have seen over a period of time and especially you know let's say you know whether it's bajaj alliance or alliance you know globally you know we do it measure your npas at a micro level and your brand at a macro level you get a good uh, you know macro and micro 
understanding of, of which are the journeys which work and which are the ones where you need to work on. Nice, nice, nice. Um, I, I'm interested. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, while you know what what Deepu touched upon was an extremely relevant one. NPS, yeah. you know, what is the customer feel and stuff. Uh, what we have also learned over a period of time is the opportunity loss. Mm. Right. So, for example, there is supposed to be a seamless journey or a seamless, you know, uh, this thing for the customer to go through. Mm. Customer drops. And, and this is I'm just taking an example of one customer who drops. Mm. Ultimately, I mean, when you put all of it together, uh, it, it becomes a huge, you know, opportunity loss from the business standpoint. Correct. Right. And hence, you will also go back and marry that to the to the to the cost of repairing that journey, yeah. and you will invest upon that in terms of technological interventions true, to true. ensure that whatever you input, the the output that you get is is exponential in nature. Absolutely. Right. I mean, uh, there are uh, different other methods that we kind of see in the Gartner talks about customer effort score. And then you, of course, have the resolution percentage and FCR, you know, first contact resolution and those kind of things. Uh, but this is like Deepu and I think uh, you mentioned, it's a it's a bit touchy topic. You, you want to make sure that it's not wishy-washy. You actually need to be able to have hard uh you know dollar values to be measured around that and some of them could be because of the effort some of them could be because customers turning away and loss of opportunity right so those would be you know a couple of ways with which you could uh you know calculate ravish you at some point is it uh, i think you were trying to say no, so so by the way uh, there, there is a lot of public uh data and correlation mm. that uh i am aware that at least the founders mm. of uh and so bain and company actually yeah. founded nps so they have actually done a lot of uh calculation around uh, you know how much of percentage NPS decrease actually so yeah. I don't have the data available with me but actually there are correlations for a lot of product categories yeah right but uh, just a very tangible thing that I'll tell you not on an NPS level but uh, maybe uh, is uh, for every there is a very tangible thing on journeys right mm. so every additional second of yeah. uh, load time that yeah. any journey takes yeah. By the way, it results in thirty percent additional drop off from from a customer perspective. So yeah. Yeah. that's a very ta very very tactical performance level metric. I thought I'll, I that is something that we measure, and yeah. that is something that you can measure using uh, Google Lighthouse that is available. Uh, you know specifically, uh, you can understand what is the performance. So that's something that you can do at a journey level. You can understand the performance of the site or web page that you have designed. But yeah, yeah on the NPS level, I think there is a lot of data, and I'm sure COPC would have also done. Yeah. you know you did there but there is it's it's quantifiable data that exists but yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not ready. So one of the things that we have seen, right, to to add to what Avish is saying, that every time, I mean, apart from the, the the seconds, but also every additional contact, right. So if you get something resolved in the first contact, compared to that with if it the same thing gets resolved in second contact, and a third contact, a fourth contact, there is a significant drop in terms of the NPS, as Deepu was mentioning, and also in terms of the loyalty, right. And uh, Avish, uh, that you might mention about, right. So there is like a every second one, there is about 35, 40 percent drop, right. And by the time you go to the third or the fourth. Both, right, you might as well not resolve the customer's issue because the impact is almost pretty much the same, right? I, I, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a lighter note. But the point is that it, it has a significant impact if the effort keeps increasing from a customer's point of view, right? So with that, right, um, I would, uh, you know, we've already kind of seven minutes beyond our time. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you, um, Deepu, Subhu, Ravish, uh, Sanjay. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope that the listeners could get something, uh, you know, out of, uh, out of what we talked about. In case anybody has questions uh, uh, beyond this, uh, we, you know, we'll be very uh, happy to answer. Uh, so please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Okay. Thanks, Shikant, for excellent moderation, and uh, thanks, Ravish, Subhu, and uh, Sanjaya. You know, for uh, you know, for valuable discussions, and thanks to the you know, Jeevan, Sani, and the entire team which worked behind the scenes to make it happen. Thank you, everyone. Sanjaya, thank you very much. This has been a wonderful uh, you know uh, association with you.